I think sorry. it's going to take longer than 40 seconds to address that. It's hard to hear down this end. That's all. I'm sorry. Oh, that's the problem with that. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we put you there. <laughs> I didn't say it was hard to hear me. <clears throat> Official time clock right there. You. I it's official seven, officially 7.30, so I'll call for the public hearing in the Great American Tavern, change of stockholders, and change of manager. Yeah. Read the public notes. Yeah. Do we have a public note? It's, uh, it's in here. I think. Oh, I'll get back. Give you just another minute. You don't mind, do you? No. Nope. Take your time. Last page. Yeah. Last page. Yeah. The last page. Okay. Yeah. In Dropbox, it's page 85. Uh, board is likely to notice a public hearing in accordance with Chapter 138 of Massachusetts General Laws. A public hearing will be held for the by the Board of Selectmen in Room 14, Town Hall, 235 North Street, on Monday, May 21st, 2012, at 7:30 p.m. On the application of Great American Tavern, LLC, DBA, Great American Tavern for a change in stockholders of said corporation. Thank you. Can you please uh, state your name and your affiliation with Great American Tavern? My name is Chuck Mulek. I'm one of the owners of Great American Tavern. Um, there's three owners now compared to when we opened, there were four owners. So we want to come in and state the change, which would be Mr. Robert Palmer is no longer part of the Great American Tavern. He was the operator on the liquor license as well. So we're here to also uh, present the new manager that will be on that liquor license. It is the process you come here first to get our approval, then you go to the ABCC? Correct. Yep, we filed all the paperwork in um, already with ABCC as well. Um, and they just said we have to come in here and just present it so he can be removed off the liquor license so he doesn't have the liability while he's not there, as well as so we can continue business and add a new person on. Okay. So the first step is we have to approve the, the change in stockholders? Correct. Okay. And Greg's all the paperwork in order? Yes, it is. Yes. It is in Mr. Chair. Did, Mr. did you say there's now only three owners? Correct. Wasn't there originally five? Nope, four. Okay. There was another, we owned another place in Woburn where there was five of us. Same owners, but there was one more at the other That's restaurant. That's probably where I'm getting confused. Yeah. Thank you. Any questions, board members, on the change in the stockholder? Do we have a motion? Mr. Yes. Board? Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the change of stockholders for the all merit, I'm sorry, for the all alcohol common vigilance license for the Great American Tavern 303 Main Street by the removal of stockholder Robert L. Palmer. Second. Any further discussion? Just point oh. of order. Oh. Close the uh, hearing. Or oh, okay. Well. Yeah, see if there's any. Uh, but Okay, no, now we can discuss it and then uh, okay. see if there's any input. Okay. Is there any input from the public regarding a change in stockholders? Hearing none. Any further discussion on the board? Oh. Okay. All in favor? Oh, you're going to close oh. the public hearing. We have to go back to open regarding the change of manager. No? Because we have another motion. Uh, change of manager does not require public hearing. Okay, fair enough. I close the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? It's unanimous. So your stockholders is done. Now tell us about your change in okay, the so place you're sitting behind you, right? Yes. That's Renee Bianchi. She is the manager that's there um, numerous hours. <laughs> so um, she will be the new person as listed on the liquor license as the manager. It was across the street almost, too, huh? Yep. <laughs> so you're really, truly living there, right? Uh, pretty much. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Any questions? Tips training. 
Yes. Yeah. Part yeah. Of, I noticed in part of your, your resume, yeah. Tips trained, trained, you have trained. quite a bit of experience in this line of, line of work. Anyone else? Yeah. Highly qualified from what I read. We have a motion, Mr. Fung? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the change of manager for the all alcohol common pitcher license for the Great American Tavern, 303 Main Street, from Robert L. Palmer to Renee M. Bianchi. Second. Any further discussion? <coughs> Just Here. wish you continued success. Thank Greater you. success. Yeah. Yeah. I do have another question. And I don't know. Do you want us to do this first before you have that question? Yeah, no. right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Good idea. Get like get good at <laughs> Any further discussion on the change of manager? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? It's unanimous. Go ahead. Okay. So my question is, when we, uh, probably last summer, we added a patio to our establishment. And Mr. Palmer at that time made, made a decision to approach you with um, a time limit on the patio. However, and we've been getting numerous calls about if the patio is open for dinner and we have to tell them no. And back then, it was asked that we would put the smokers into that area to confine them. I don't know if you recall that. Sure. However, yeah. the ABCC came in, the auditor, and told us absolutely cannot have people in there smoking because it's a licensed area as well as if it was, even though it's shut down, just like walking into your restaurant after hours, you cannot smoke. So they told me we would be in um, violation of our liquor license. So we were unable to do that. So with that said, where we cannot use that is that I would like to see how to go about extending the hours, whether it's to dusk or the business hours of the, um, of the restaurant. So I just don't know like how we would do that. Mr. Bellicotis, can you help us with that? Mm, I'm trying to think what the status of the the uh, approval was from a year ago <coughs> when we went through and we went through this exercise of it. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Palmer, he, I don't know what really why he did it. I was I, I even mentioned to him dusk, but he decided to make it six o'clock, I remember, saying that he would close up and turn the music off at six six PM. Um, when when we came in, it was <coughs> still dark at six. Not right. It was winter time when we had right. the discussion. So the yeah. problem is, it's dark at eight eight thirty now, and uh, we leave our place and we go down the street a little bit and we see the other place open with the patio that's jam packed. Um, so we're just looking for the same rights that they have. I guess is what we're looking for. Can I get a request a change in the license then? There was, but it requires a hearing. Right. No, so no, another hearing before, before right. the board. Right. right. Part of that had to do with noise. Yeah. Oh, very much so. Yeah. I think part of the concern about <coughs> that was brought to our attention was the noise related to when you do music, you know, outside, mm -hmm. and the hours, you know, in the close proximity to the neighbors right there. Um, they were already complaining about the lights. Never mind. Yep. Adding the additional factor of noise uh, outside, I think, was the major concern on everybody's part. Mm. I, I think the actual big, the big part of the noise was the smokers Correct. were gathered out there talking loud. And that's why we had suggested move them over to the fenced in area, it would block the sound. And that's how this, that whole thing Correct. ended up. So you're still going to have the issue with what do you do with your smokers during that time, even if we... Well, we did put the signs up like we were asked. Yes. Um, to be respectful. We put them in the restrooms. We put them on the doors. We do echo out there. We have do a doorman now that does go out there periodically and ask them to please keep it down. Um, most of the complaints were about the people talking in the parking lot because right. it would just travel. Right. Matter of fact, I recall one of the people said, we didn't even know you had loud, uh, live music there. It's the people on the other side of the street that hear the music. So we kind of had a two people that lived across the street from us. On Cross 28? Cross 28? Mm -hmm. on, yes. Really? What's the name of that one? Yeah, there was some. Chester? Chester. There was Chester. music from inside the building. Yeah, yeah but I, I would think they would hear it from the back side and on the side. Right. That's what, but for some reason it travels. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's, why it travels. Yeah, correct. Personally, I haven't 
heard from anyone from the public since this and problem was here on any issue. We put carpets in to absorb sound. We put sound absorbers up yep. on the ceilings. Um, uh, tectum panels around the top to try to help muffle the, the sound in inside. The fire room? With Both rooms. Both rooms. Mm -hmm. Both rooms. So. To be honest with you, that's the biggest complaint I've heard about the it's loud. Right, but it is inside. Very loud. Inside. It's right. And we've Tough been trying and trying and trying to do something with it. And little by little, it's getting there. I think it's working. Like I said, I don't know if anyone else has heard anything since the last time no, I before. No, I have no complaints. As far as the lights, also the landlord changed the bulbs. He blacked out the backs so it doesn't go yeah, that way. Direction. And I changed the timer so it shuts off as soon as we close, other than staying on until 3, 4 in the morning. Um, so we, we are trying to do what we can right. for that. I think what you need to do is set up for another public hearing regarding the okay. change of the hours in the patio. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you. All right. All right. Good luck. Thank you. All right. So we have uh, Why don't we go back and finish the uh, more time for more recommendations? Sure. Item number nine. Item number nine. So do you see uh, Mr. Fear has come in. That is we good. probably had anticipated that. We wouldn't be getting to this until later. We already discussed. Uh, Martin, uh, the, the board has voted to recommend your article, set up the revolving account. So I don't know if you want to come up, say anything else, or they don't want you to sit here and waste your time. No. Um, I thank you for that. Um, I don't know that the, um, the, the FinCom will also recommend that they didn't take a vote when I was at their meeting. But I thank you for recommending. You're welcome. Yeah, I think there was some confusion, yeah. Martin, though, as to what we heard. What was presented to the FinCom, the scope of what you presented to them was beyond what's presented in the article. Yes, and, and Ms. Robot asked that the Warren article be re reworded to include um, other community health programs. Well, okay. Your prom we did, yeah, we didn't. Okay, first of all, what was presented to us previously was what was in the, in the warrant article. Mm -hmm. And if I recall correctly, there was some discussion about potentially later on coming back looking to expand it to other areas, but that's not what was presented to us originally. Um, so what we recommended is what's printed in the warrant because it's limited in scope. Try to be able to go get some additional vaccine if it's available. and. Um, so what we voted to recommend was what's in the warrant, not beyond that. And my understanding is, well, first of all, that we, I, I know for a fact that the FinCom has an aversion to revolving funds anyway, um, from a philosophical standpoint. Uh, this seemed to make eminent sense to like, all of us, based on the limited scope as to what you're looking for. So if you're looking to expand it beyond that, and there's going to be a motion at town meeting that's going to do that, we need to know that sooner rather than later, um, because that may change our position. Um, I, I, be I believe the Warren article um, refers to immunization clinics and um, um, emergency dispensing site expenditures. But for instance, um, July 1st of this year, um, regulations will take effect, which um, will require that people no longer dispose of needles, syringes, lances, sharps um, in their trash. My thought was to use this revolving fund um, to be able to dispose of those items because I, I can, the state will provide us with um, as many free shops containers as we want, but not the cost of disposal. For instance, my thought was that we could sh sell a shop's container to someone that had the need for it, whether it's a, a pregnant woman with gestational diabetes or a, a person that needs vitamin B12 injections or, 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 or whatever, and they had the need for that. So, I mean, we budget a certain amount of money for shop's disposal, really, as a <coughs> result of the clinics that we have. But 